You are a Unity developer. You just opened Godot for the first time and you can't find where are the whole game objects and the components. Where are the prefabs? Where are the levels? There is no concept of level here. All you can see is this tab saying scene, create root node, a bunch of buttons, and then if you click other node, you see an even bigger list of nodes and you have no idea where to start. Where the hell are nodes? Where are my game objects? Where are my components? And this is what we are going to explore in this video. And wait a moment, even if you are not a Unit developer and you have no interest in Unit, but you have interest in Godot, watch this video anyway, because there is a lot of Godot knowledge here. If you want, or if you prefer reading, this video is also available as a blog post on my website. Check the link in the description of the video. So let's get started. Before we dive further into Godot, let's first recap the unit building blocks. In unit, game objects are the main build blocks of scenes. But game objects by themselves do not do anything. They are just empty transforms and empty position in the world. They need components. Components are behaviors and properties to game objects. A game object can contain any amount of components, defining multiple behaviors. In this case, game objects are containers for components. Unity has many built-in components. And to build your own components, you write C-sharp scripts that inherits from one behavior. After writing a script, you attach it to a game object as a component. Nodes are Godot's game objects and components. Nodes are the building blocks of Godot. But as opposed to game objects, nodes are not absent of behaviors. Nodes are the actual behaviors, just like unit components. Every Godot node is of a class type, as in object programming class. For that reason, the node behaves as per its class implementation with its own sets of properties, methods, and signals, which are events. But since nodes are components, how do you compose nodes together in order to combine all the needed behaviors like a game object? For example, a third-person 3D character or a first-person 3D character needs at least three to four different components. A skeletal mesh, in the case of a third-person controller, one or more colliders, a camera, and scripts that defines the controls, the physics, and more. In Godot, you compose nodes in a tree. You can nest any amount of nodes and arrange them in any combinations you like. There are no restrictions. For that reason, for a third-person character example, we can arrange it with, with a node of the type kinebatic body as the root, and as a child, all the other nodes or components. Or we could have a spatial node, which is the basic node for 3D components as the root, and then arrange the, the rest of the hierarchy in a completely different way as the previous composition. But in unit, we can attach scripts here to define our custom behaviors. Aren't we missing the scripts here? Not exactly. If you notice, there is a paper icon here attached to some of the nodes. If you click those paper icons, you are going to the script attached to the node. A Godot node is a component by itself, and a node is of a class type. If you want to add custom behavior on top of it, you are going to attach a script to the node. You can right-click it and go to attach script. You can then find an existing script, or you can just type a new name here to create a new script. And notice that when you choose to attach a node script or create a new one, it inherits from the node base class. You can also inherit from a derived type of the select node type. This way you are inheriting from a node base class or from a already derived class. And by inheriting from the node base type, you can reuse all of the node's base class methods, events, and properties. Also override of any of them. And of course, you can add new methods, new events, and new properties. For example, by adding a script to a kinematic body node, you have all the methods and properties available to make a character or any other moving physics object. Again, a basic object-oriented programming concept, which is inheritance. And of course, this is the same for both GDScript and c -sharp. Defining a class name is not mandatory for scripts in Godot. You can freely attach scripts to nodes, and your code is going to add and override behavior from the base class. But if you add a class name to a script with class name, you are effectively creating a custom node type. 
which will also going to appear in the add new node dialog alongside Godot's built-in types. This means this is how you create your custom component types, just like in Unity. Not only that, you can also create a new script that inherits from your previously created kinematic body scripts that defines yet another new type of character inheriting from your current implementation. For example, in this case, I have a new script that extends from my character 3D, extends this Godot's keyword for inheritance, and if I go to my 3D character, I, I have here the basic class, my 3D character that I created, that also inherits from another one, which is kinematic body. And this is the same for C Sharp. You can write a new script that inherits from your base class or from a Godot built-in type. It's also worth to mention that you can also script you create in another script by extending the script path. For example, extends, then I can write the local folder to that other script. This way, I don't have to, to define my custom class name here. I can just extend from the script path. You'll learn that nodes are arranged and composed in trees. The next step is reusing and recombining those trees, as well creating instances of those trees. For example, what is the user to create a 30-person character node tree if it exists in only a single place? How do you place this character in game? How can you place your usable UI or 2D sprites in your game? How can you also place more than one UI button or more than one character? How can you use your characters to also serve as NPCs with custom NPC behavior? How can you package those node trees in order to have a single source of truth for a certain composition and behavior and then instance and even inheriting from them? In unit, prefabs serve this purpose. You can define one or more game objects as prefabs. Not only that, you can nest prefabs within prefabs. And if you change the base prefab, it's reflected across all instances, even inside the nested prefabs, while, the, while at the same time, you can override properties in the instanced prefabs. But fear not, Godot has the exactly same functionality. The answer in Godot's are scenes. You have been creating scenes all this time alone. You can save any node tree or have any branching or any branching of a node tree as a scene. In the same way that you can save any game object or any branch of it as a prefab, you can just drag and drop and you can create a prefab. In Godot, it's the same. You right click, save a branch as scene, or, and you save the whole current viewport, which actually the node tree is a scene, as you can see here, and then you save it as a scene. The saved scene is then going to be a file in the file system, and you can drag and drop those scenes in, in any other scene or, no, or node tree. Or use the instance child scene button to add an instance of those scenes that you already created. And of course, you can also instance scenes with code using the load or preload functions. The scene is going to be added to the node tree as a node itself, as you can see here. In the end, scenes are three of nodes being effectively a node by itself. Remember that in the 3D character example, we composed it with some nodes and saved it as a scene. And then when you reuse your scenes in other node trees, you can identify that a node is a scene by the clapperboard icon alongside the node name. If you click the clapperboard icon, you are going to open that scene, just like in Unit, you identify a, pref a game object as a prefab with the right arrow. And if you click that arrow, you're going to open the prefab itself, and you can also open the nested prefabs. In Godot, for example, I have those items here. On the clapperboard icons, you can see there are scenes. If I click the clapperboard, I'm going to open that scene. And as you can see, even this open new open scene also has another clapperboard icon. If I click here, I open the base scene, so creating a nested prefab. And if I change this base scene or the derived scene, all the derived and instanced nodes of that scene are also going to be updated, just like unit prefabs. Since scenes are nodes themselves and are tree of nodes, 
A scene can also inherit from another scene, as I showed previously. For example, this, sprite, this 2D sprite item is called the Hunter Armor. You can see it has some grayed out nodes, which means those are inherited nodes. And the Hunter Armor itself has a clapperboard icon, which means it inherits from a scene. And this way I can create, keep creating children scenes that inherit from this base scene. Let's open, for example, the inventory screen scene here. Let's open, and you can see it has a child UI inventory scene. And it has a node tree here called grid container, which has many instanced scenes here. So as you can see from all the clapperboard icons, those are buttons. And if I open this button, I'm going to go to the base scene. I can also override those derived scenes. For example, in this Hunter Armor sprite, there is a white node here, which means this is a specific just to the Hunter Armor children of the collectible item tile scene. But the other children scenes of the collectible item tile, for example, I can open the Hunter Arrow, it still only has the base nodes from the base scene collectible item tile. Only a Hunter Armor has the label node. And to create children scenes or inherited scene, you just go to scene, new inherited scene, and then you pick up the base scene and you're going to create a children scene, just like unit prefabs, where you can nest one, nest one side another. You have a base prefab and then you can nest other prefabs and you keep going to the base prefabs. And of course, we can override the base scene properties in the specter, just like with the unit. For example, in the collectible item tile, the sprite node has a weapon sprite. But if I go to the hunter armor, which inherits from this base scene, if I click the sprite, you can see it's a completely different sprite. And if, and if I instance that scene in my older node tree, I can override it here as well. I can just drag and drop a scene here. I can right click this instance at scene, go to editable children, and I can override another properties here. All of this is just like nodes because scenes are three of nodes and those three of nodes are nodes themselves. So as I can see, there is a three of nodes here and when it drag it here, there are nodes by themselves. And then in the end, Godot labels are just same trees as well. For example, in this project, which is my Zelda Breath of the Wild inventory system and UI made with Godot, which is open source, so check out the link in the description. This is a game level, but it, in the end, it's just a scene tree, which in turn are scenes, which in turn are node trees, which leads to nodes. So, Godot levels are also nodes. And you can use them just like nodes. This is the simplicity of Godot. But how Godot makes the distinction of nodes and tree of nodes as a scene tree, since everything is just a node. Scene trees are saved as Godot's resources. So for that reason, scenes are just Godot resources and they are saved as resources. So if I go to the file manager here, and, then, and if I open those saved scenes, you can see they are saved as resources, which means readable text files, and they can be treated just like any other Godot resources, which means extremely flexibility and extensibility. You can use Godot's resources just like units, scriptable objects, but it, it goes even beyond that with more flexibility. In the end, in Godot, everything is a node and everything is a resource. Even the scripts attached to your node are resources. Unfortunately, resources are out of the scope of this video, but check the links in the description of the video for more information. So where can you learn more? You can check Godot's excellent documentation on nodes and scenes. You can check Godot's documentation on resources. You can also check my Godot course where we build a complex and extensible user interface, which is data-driven with Godot's resources, where you're also going to learn 
of Godot's fundamentals, everything about Godot resources to create extensible and dynamic data systems, and it's also masterclass about Godot's UI. And not only that, the project built in this course is open source, so you can already check this inventory screen and all the data systems that we build in this course. Since we are here, I also want to tell you about another thing from Godot. Godot is incredibly good and lightweight to write general usage software tools and apps. I even built a clone of Trello with Godot. You can check the link to the repository in the description of the video. And not only that, I also write a book about developing software tools and apps with Godot. Developing business software with Godot. This is crazy, right? But Godot is really good for that. So don't forget to check my GitHub, where I have a lot of Godot open source projects. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to this channel for more game development and software development and 3D art content. There is also an indie game dev podcast here. Thanks for watching. And if you have more questions about migrating from Unity to Godot, let me know what kind of video do you want about this subject. And of course, about Godot, Unreal, and or any other software development video.